Himalaya Wellness Company is one of the leading global herbal healthcare brands that has been harnessing the science of Ayurveda since the 1930s. Today present in over 100 countries, they continue to spread the promise of wellness in every home, happiness in every heart to millions of people around the world. Welcome to the House of Wellness Season 2, powered by Himalaya Wellness Company. This season, we embark on a very special journey to better understand the concept of holistic wellness by talking to people who have excelled in their fields, sport, health, social sector. We try and better understand the facets that make up holistic wellness. For instance, mindfulness, mental health, sustainable living, nutrition, and many more. All of that designed to help us understand better everything that encompasses the world of holistic wellness. Because of what we learn and understand through these various people helps us better our knowledge and of course inspire us to make holistic wellness a fundamental part of our journey of life so that we live life healthier and happier. I'm Charu Sharma and today I'm delighted to talk to 6.83 or 6.70, if you prefer. And if you know your athletics, it is the only lady in India who won a World Championship of Athletics bronze medal. Nobody has ever done that again. And of course, she not only has done all of that, she's a Padma Shri, and apart from that, she is also now a leading coach who has done very well and also a senior vice president of the Athletics Federation of India. What has she not done in this fantastic life of hers? Welcome, Anju Bobby George. Chari, good morning. Thanks so much for joining us. It's been a fabulous journey of yours. And of course, we go back a long way. Let me take you back to your early days. In India, the world of sport had progressed. But what was the scenario in terms of understanding the body and the mind and nutrition in the days that you were beginning to compete at the higher levels? Of course, uh, a sports person's career starts from their mother's kitchen. So, <laughs> well said. <laughs> yes. So initial stages, see, no one was there to teach us what to eat, what to, not like today. So it was our mother and what she cooks, we eat. My mother, she exactly know what to give for a sports person. And see, every time, when I, whenever I come back from school, the ragi was the first one. I, was, I used to cry a lot. But uh, I, now I know why she used to give that for me. Every menu, she's having a routine. So boiled eggs, I don't like. This ragi, I don't like. <laughs> <laughs> but I have to eat that. And she was like, he was, she was forcing me to eat. When Bobby, again, he was, he was very strict with me. And he, uh, he know exa exactly what to give and uh, what not to eat. So I was fortunate enough to get my mother, Bobby, again. Till 10th, I was in the first bench. I was the shortest girl in the <laughs> class. <laughs> and Hard to believe. <laughs> yeah. So after 10th, I started growing like a giant. <laughs> and everybody was asking, what do you eat? <laughs> <laughs> Ragi <laughs> and Ragi eggs. eggs. Yeah. <laughs> but now, see, things are changing. And uh, for a good athlete, there will be some nutritionist and uh, they, they can help them. And the athletes, actually, they are learning a lot now. And... Uh, even the system is also supporting them a lot. So Anju, from your mother's kitchen and ragi and eggs, let's move on to the modern world of dieting because there are 500 options out there. What do you make of all of this? And, and what would your advice be to people in terms of this wide, wild, uh, I think somewhat misunderstood world of dieting? Yes. Actually, most of the people, actually, uh, actually why they are going behind diet just to reduce their weight. And for me, it is not looking like lean is good. What you are eating healthy is good. And see, I am also taking uh, advice from uh, my nutritionist. And all the athletes are also taking... Yeah, I wonder if, uh, because ragi and eggs are still very useful, yes. I wonder if that is what you use because you also run an academy. But let's stay with nutrition. Uh, do you think that had science been more expanded in your time, you might have actually done better because of better nutrition? And are you now following more global, globally accepted universal practices of nutrition and what all are, uh, uh, is, is the new now? Yeah, definitely. I'm also very much involved in that. And recently I did my saliva test, gene test. Whoa. See, I lost my prime time 
So rightly, you can choose what all you need to eat and what all you need to avoid. Athletes actually used to blindly eat all the vitamins and what all available in the market they used to eat. But here, the right thing is something different. And that is what now athletes are doing. See, I was taking coffee throughout my career. And now after this gene test, I found out that coffee is not good for me. Oh, good. I'm glad we had tea outside just now. <laughs> yes. Uh, is tea okay for you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, these kind of things, which is not acceptable by your body, you have to avoid. And there are ways to find out, uh, as you said, through these tests, what yes. agrees with you, what does not yes, agree with yes, you. Yes, yes. Nutritionists can rightly guide you what you have to eat, the quantity. And see, I don't think, see, every time you need to measure and eat. And see, I am allergic to gluten also. So, I stopped eating gluten. So such kind of things and of course overeating is not good, not advisable. Yeah, I used to overeat like and mad see, when again, I was younger. Again, one more thing. See, region-wise, your food is actually designed for you. See, eating wheat, sometimes it's not advisable and red rice for a North Indian maybe not advisable because of the region and the weather and everything. It's related actually. It gets into your DNA. Yes, it becomes a DNA. part of who you are. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I think that's a very important point because everybody is built differently yes. and you can't have the same for everybody. You can't, you know, yeah, tar everybody with the same brush. What about supplements though? Because in the past, I'm sure they were limited. Now there's such a wide array of supplements. Do you recommend that? And, and, and of course, there may be different supplements required for different kinds of athletes. Because Again, even in uh, athletics, there's so many disciplines. Athletics especially, it is the toughest event and every day we are testing our body. It's not a machine. So there, there will be some wear and tears and we need to replace and we need to repair that. So vitamins is essential for your body. and But you need to rightly choose what to eat and what not to eat. We'll get into injuries later yes, because yes. such an important part of a sports person yes. particularly. But just staying with nutrition now, in an average day, for an average person, what would you recommend as the mantra for good nutrition? There's some things that should just not be eaten, some things that should be eaten. For a normal person, what would be your advice to lead a holistic, balanced kind of nutrition lifestyle? Yeah, as I said, you don't need to eat everything. First, you need to go for a blood check. And what all deficiency you have, you need to supply. And certain things actually like uh, protein and certain things actually after a certain age, you have to follow that. Don't take anything like for a prolonged period. So take, break, take, break. So that's the mantra. See, it's you and your body. And if you love your body, you have to maintain your body and see your hair, your skin and everything should be happy. That's the appearance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I think I'm pretty happy. But <laughs> we'll see. What about vegetarianism versus non-vegetarianism? Do you have a stand on that? Or do you think vegetarians can be equally superior athletes without really resorting to any kind of meat? There are many good athletes from the vegetarian side also. Uh, but almost I think every, every athlete uh, they are turning into non-vegetarians because from the veget vegetables, it's very less what we are getting. So most of the athletes are turning into uh, non-vegetarians. So let's get into the physical side of life because, I mean, as a sports person, there's so much training, so much hard work, so much sacrifice. And there's also overtraining. People yes. could overtrain and yes. get injured. So is there a scientific development of, of how much w one must train and the whole concept of going to the gym or other kinds of exercises. There's so much in the world out there. What do you currently prefer and what was there in your time when you were training? See, overtraining is a dangerous part in a sport. So, till a certain age, we cannot specialize in one event. You have to do a lot of uh, events and then later stages choose one event. So, that's the right thing what we can do. And shyly see, especially our athlete, she's very young, a 19-year-old. Just like in a nutshell, we are keeping her and without exposing her too much, without uh, giving hard training, but still she's doing better. Nowadays, athletes have a lot of opportunities and science evolved a lot. And we know, athletes know, coaches know what, what not to do and what, what should do. It's, it's a science actually. It's complete science. Without question. I don't know how, deeper, <laughs> how, how much deeper we should get into that. Yeah. But by the way, I want to let everyone know that Shelly Singh, is an Anju trainee and she has already done 676 now. They're all going to the Asian Games. What are your expectations very quickly from Shelly? Uh, <laughs> in terms of the distances that they jump now, do you think she is a medal contender? She's leading. She's Fantastic. leading. So we, we can expect. But she's still, after I don't know how many years, I don't want to give your age away, 
uh, has not hit <laughs> 683. So will she get there? And, and is that a, a distance that can win her medals at the world level? Uh, that's what Bobby is saying. She should cross 683 very soon. And she will do that. See, long jump, especially in India, our athletes are doing really well now in both the sessions, men and women. This coming Olympics, we are we can expect some good news from jumping pit. Uh, yeah, that's well, my, uh, my dream. <laughs> well, let's just take care of the Asian Games first. Let's win yes. some medals and get to the Olympics. So Asian Games, definitely men and women, they are going to do better. Good news. Fantastic yes. news. Let's talk about the mechanics of the long jump. I don't think enough people understand how technical a long jump is. Because, I mean, where you start, you the whole run-up, the acceleration, the leap. There's so many aspects to long jump. What was your process of learning? What was the most difficult part in becoming a, a world-level, a world-leading long jumper? See, world is not fair always. There are dark side and there are good side. So I was in that good side. So without taking any drugs, without taking any extra boosters, my strength was my technique. So my running technique and my jumping technique was perfect. That's why I could do, I could beat others, those who are coming with all these bad substances. And see, long jump force for a normal person, it's just a running and jumping, but it's not that. It's highly scientific, like highly technical. On the runway, we need to control the entire body, mm -hmm. even our fingers, even our small, small group of muscles. After certain um, meters, we have to lift and that ankle should be proper. So everything, even running, our high knee, our um, everything actually from the ground, from the bottom, to top, everything should be perfect. Then only we'll we'll get an effective takeoff. And of course, the fear of a foul jump, because there are so many long jumpers who, unfortunately, even at the highest level, with so much of training, yes, foul all three, all six jumps. So it just you know the average person can't understand. Please explain to us the difficulty in knowing exactly inch to inch your run up, and still there are foul jumps. Now it must prey on one's mind. So, uh, you must never not fall. ask must not me. Fall. Why I never registered a 7 meter jump? I did many times. <laughs> <laughs> even in competition, even in training, many times. But never I got a valid jump. So this foul is always <sighs> someone's like a nightmare. nightmare. <laughs> even in World Championship, I crossed 7 meters. Even in World Athletic Final, I crossed 7 meters. One or two, two centimeters you Not foul. centimeter, two millimeter. Oh. <laughs> two millimeter foul, yes. <laughs> Which brings us to the mental aspect of sport and of life. Because even in the long jump, there's so much visualization of every step, of everything that you do in the long jump. You were talking about it. So the mental component of training, of excelling, talk to us about that. Because there are possibilities that people don't achieve their potential because mentally they're not strong enough. Is that true? Can you imagine a person doing any event, long jump or any event, standing in the middle of that track alone, representing your country and thousands, of people, thousand, shouting, thousands yeah. of people and the end of the world is watching you and you have to deliver your best. What are the policies or, or should we say the training methodologies that you follow with your trainees now in terms of better preparing them mentally to go and perform the task to their ability? Throughout my career, I experienced a lot. And as a coach, Bobby, he also experienced that lot. So for Shaili, I am uh, acting as a mentor and Bobby is her coach. See, I know what we can expect during a bigger competition and what ways we can expect, what precautions we need to take. See, during my World Championship, Paris World Championship, where I got the medal, after my fourth jump, someone has taken my check mark and I was jumping from a blind sport. And still I got a medal. Before she gone for the world championship, I said, see, see this, this kind of incidents happened to me. So you should be very Make sure your conscious. Mark is, yeah, exactly. In. That happened to her also. Oh. <laughs> Somebody shifted but, a mark? Yes. But Ridiculous. she was ready for that. Mm. With my experience, I explained her what to do. And she was ready for that. Well, I'm glad and, and I hope she's learned the technique of yes. where your marker is. <laughs> So let's get into the whole concept of mindfulness, of being in this meditative state when you have to perform your best. Because, I mean, there's one thing to be agitated and aggressive, yes. but also you have to be at great peace with yourself. 
are there techniques that you follow maybe yoga or breathing or whatever else i was not doing actually anything but training every day training i was just getting that because see, when we, you are on the runway many will be like around and we need to shut your ears shut your eyes and just concentrate on that mark and uh, where you need to land so that's a technique actually without teaching or without knowing we are learning that but now are you but focusing now, on but now yes we are giving mental training and support for most of the athletes actually they are taking that yes well it's not just for competition but mm -hmm. also to lead your life on a regular ordinary day one needs to be very mindful one needs to be confident one needs to know yes. where one is what's your advice in that area where people just get more comfortable with who they are Yeah nowadays see, we are in front of the screen for such a long time and even in traffic also we have to be patient so and everyday life we are for facing those kind of challenges and keeping us calm is an art we have to like work with your mind and work with your brain but doing experiencing that yourself that, that that you have to do that part you have to do this is our life and you you should decide where to go you can worsen it or you can enjoy your life that is your decision and you need to learn such kind of things how to calm yourself see it's always not money or always your fame or anything you need to find time for yourself also success means different things to different people yes. it's not only an achievement in yes. your own sphere but let's get to exercise i'm sure you had a certain routine when you were competing now have things changed drastically in terms of exercise do you recommend a lot of gymming or are you happy with free hold exercise calisthenics what, what do you do to maintain your physical calm so i do exercise and i am not getting time every day but whenever i get time and after 40 you need to take care of your muscles you have to be very careful don't suddenly go and do some vigorous exercise that will end up injury better you take someone's advice and with the proper trainer you have to start some people actually they are focusing on their cardio exercise and some people like me are more into gym anaerobic anaerobic things yes quickly touching on warming up and cooling down what are your policies there because as you just said it's very important not just jump into something for me it was one hour warm up before the event and it, there are different steps but for a normal person before going for any activities you have to warm up your body properly and you have to stretch your body and after workout you need to make it cool This is actually three phase uh, warm up do exercise and cool down and any uh, special cool down techniques that you now teach your depends on your workout what you're doing after heavy weight training you cannot do proper stretching then again see muscles are actually in a tense position and if you do stretching it is like snap. Uh, snap yes ooh we don't want that happen <laughs> i'm also going to move into another area which is important for everybody leave alone athletes the whole stress not just of competition but of life itself So do you have a few mantras and do you now teach your uh, trainees as well how to keep away from stress because stress you can't see feel touch you can't smell you know it comes from anywhere but it has to be kept away and what are your That mantras? is that's developing by yourself See if you don't want to take something just avoid it and if don't want to listen somebody avoid that So all the positive things you just absorb and negative things just avoid So that's what we need to learn in your life yeah it's a complicated world out there yes. especially for the youngsters really feel for them because things are changing so rapidly i think youngsters can't keep pace at times but you got to calm down and i'm sure take advice from people like anju and others <laughs> about how to lead a holistic life anju we also have to do a quick rapid fire thing oh my god <laughs> are you ready here we go what is the one exercise that you best love i like squat like squats yes. we'll take that okay the one thing you do or did before you compete the one thought that you have the one thought before your jump i have to cross 7 meters that is my dream always <laughs> wow and you did but you know sometimes fouls yes. and wind Technical and all that issues. Is, yeah complicated yes. however it's not easy but give us your one role model i don't like that concept because oh. be your own role model why you are searching some someone outside yeah i like that <laughs> well said your number one go to method for recovering after heavy exercise a long cold bath after every training <laughs> uh, okay last one can you sum up your 
ओवरऑल होलिस्टिक वेलनेस मंत्र सी माई वेलनेस मंत्र drink lot of water everywhere i go in terms of any medical interference that is required in my life the first thing people say is oh medical you need to drink more water <laughs> i'm always carrying a 2 liter bottle with me so that's my target see okay. one more thing i can say i'm living with a single kidney so i'm sorry we forgot that during our chat <laughs> it's very very important you know the the fact that you've lived with and somehow managed so well with just one kidney remarkable as of to my coach and my parents and your dna and your training yes. and everything about you i did that um, test no so it's saying i don't need anyone to push for me to do any kind of exercise that's my in my gene anju thank you so much for sparing the time to chat to us and hope all of you enjoyed this wonderful conversation with the only lady in india still who has won a world championship of athletics medal it's incredible really her achievements many many years ago but now luckily she is training and mentoring other youngsters as well who uh, we hope can succeed follow her footsteps or even better them i'm sure she wouldn't mind but we enjoyed talking to her and learning of her past and of course the present as well and we do wish her the very best but i hope you learned something new and uh, of course enjoyed the conversation remember it's all about holistic wellness and finally it's all about you it begins with you it ends with you so be well be kind and of course thank you for tuning in we'll see you again next time